So give yourselves a woo. Woo! Oh, y'all are good. But, but you got you to gotta get the hands going, too. So, okay, will you do it again? Okay, one, two, three. Woo! Hello and good morning. A little woo hands going here. So I'm like, woo, thank you for being here today. I love it. I always look so forward to our Tuesday morning times together. And it's just so fun to be able to share in this journey of faith with each of you. And part of that journey of faith, we have something new that is starting. Um, on March 1st at 10 o'clock Central Time, we will be broadcasting. The uh, first of our many inspiring messages called Let's Chat, and just various guests will be coming on the show on the first and the third Friday of every month. And our first, well, our first one actually was Chelsea Dembo, and I we did hers as a little preview, uh, a little teaser out there, and hers was a great interview. If you haven't had a chance to go check that out, it's on the face of uh, the fun, fearless page. And I invite you to go listen to her. She just had a great story to share. And then starting on March 1st, our first one in the ongoing series will be Kathy Weaver. So yay, Kathy. And I would imagine that Kathy is probably with us this morning. Uh, yes, there you are. <laughs> and so I've had fun. This week has been my week of interviewing people. So I've had just such a fun time doing that. And just want to share that with you because, you know, everybody has times when they just need that little inspiration. I love, I interviewed Lisa Fredrickson yesterday and her advice at the end of the show. You have to watch the show to really understand why she said this. Because she said, if you, if you need a little therapy, go buy a chicken. <laughs> so, just how her chickens have just been uh, a wonderful treat for her, bring her joy as well as she gets fresh eggs every day. So, so it's fun just to hear where different people come from, what their journey is, and how God is working in their lives. So I invite you to join us for that. Now, since I'm also making announcements, uh, today, our, on our fourth Tuesday of the month, we do a virtual networking, and that is on my Zoom page. And if you go to any of my sites to the Delinda Lane page or to Fun Fearless, that link is there uh, for my Zoom. Okay, so it is a virtual networking. Everyone will get to share their one minute. Um, I would say that if we have 40 people or so, you might only get 45 seconds, but I'll, we'll figure it out. Everybody is going to get to share. So that's a wonderful time of getting to know more people. And it really just fits right into our topic today as we continue on talking about the prayer of Jabez. And I want to ask you, so whoever's out there, if you want to answer the question, have you been praying the prayer of Jabez? Last week, I ended the show with a challenge to pray, pray the prayer of Jabez at, every day. Jabez or Jabez, I'm not sure exactly which is the proper pronunciation, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So we also have uh, started a, uh, a chat group in the Fun Fearless group about the prayer of Jabez. And I've been adding some, interjecting some thoughts in there and other people have as well. And just saying, yes, I, you know, I, I prayed the prayer today. It's just nice to hang out with other people. It's like, oh, they're praying that too. And it's going to be fun just to see what avenues and things that God opens up because we are praying. Here's the bottom line. We are praying God's will for our lives. So when you're praying his will, his will will be done. <laughs> you know, it's just as simple as that. It just seems so like that's a miracle. That can't happen. But God, and everything is possible with God. We can't out give God. And so as we, uh, as we kind of jump right into that, the, the part that we're talking about today is to live large for God. You know, I think, Part of, you know, we've been through an interesting, for lack of a better word, we've been through an interesting time through the whole pandemic and all that. And actually, just over these last 10, 20 years, there's been a, a shift in our, in our, not our beliefs as much as how we share our beliefs. When I was in school, which was more than 10 or 20 years ago, okay, but when I was growing up, 
everybody went to church. I mean, that was just part of society. People went to church on Sundays, um, you know, and the uh, Jewish uh, people, they went to synagogue and people went to the uh, place of their faith to worship. And so on Sundays, everybody would go to church and very often we'd go home for dinners or invite people over or whatever. Through the years that changed, and I think a big part of that was because of sports. Now, my kids, that I we really lived through the beginning beginnings of that, as far as I can kind of tell, just from my own perspective. In the early years, it was like there was never any um, team sports on Sunday. It was kind of a reserved day. You know, that was the day. That was the Lord's day. We went to church, like it was saying. Um, but we didn't have sports and certainly i didn't have any conflicts on sundays because nothing y'all if you're young you don't know this stuff right? but when i was growing up and kathy was growing up and some of our other friends out there you could not do anything on sunday the stores were closed you could not go shopping there really wasn't anything else to do except get together with family and friends and that turned out to be such a wonderful thing in growing up so you'd go to church and I love, you know, Mike could tell this, but I love to go to church. I have always loved to go to church. I love to be around my Christian friends. And when I was in high school, that was just the place I wanted to be. We had youth choir on Sunday afternoons, and then we'd have a snack at church. And then there was an evening service that was in the Baptist church. I've mentioned that before that, you know, that was raised in the Baptist church. So that's the way it went. Then as I got older, got married and had kids, in the first few years when they were really small, there weren't any conflicts. But as they got older, that's when that change started happening. And they, you know, so they'd have baseball games or baseball practice or soccer or whatever the sport would be on Sunday. So then parents had to make a choice. You know, are we going to keep our kids in the sport that's, you know, interrupting our our special Sunday, you know, our Sunday time of going to church and being with family. So along the way then to they started opening up shopping centers and all of those things. So life really has changed in this period of time. And so now that we've been through the pandemic, what happened then is all the churches got shut down. Everything got shut down. Remember? Yeah. How could you forget? <laughs> Where were you? Even 10 years, 20 years from now, people will be saying, so what were you doing? What did you do during the pandemic? Just like, you know, people ask, you know, where were you when Kennedy was shot or where were you uh, when the Twin Towers went down? Those kind of major things that happen in our society that just make a huge, profound difference. So the church then also shut down during that time. But the good news is, and there is, there has been good news during this time. And I don't know, maybe it was just really a big wake up call because families who have been disconnected in many cases, this isn't everybody 100%, no, I'm thinking generalities, that families that had not had dinners together, you know, like I said, they didn't do Sunday dinners, so now we have shopping and all the other things to do and sports activities to do on Sundays. So that family unit of coming together and having dinners together, as opposed to being out taking Johnny and Susie to ballet and all the other sports things, Families began coming back together because you didn't have any other place to go. You had to be home. And I've heard great stories. Um, one of my great friends, she and her family, they started playing games. They were all grown, like 18, 20 in that age. And they were all, you know, quarantined together. They started doing games on, you know, during the week and stuff. So different things were happening in bringing the families oftentimes closer together. And I know there were those families that once they were together realized that that wasn't such a good thing. And so some adjustments had to be made from that too. But as you know, I like looking at what the positive repercussions are. So when we look at the prayer of Jabez and he, the prayer is saying, you know, Lord, you know, crying out, Lord, I implore you, to bless me indeed with your blessings, all the gifts you have for me. I don't care. I don't, I'm not asking you to bless me with what I'm doing right now. Not that that's bad, but I want your blessings, Lord, and enlarge my territory. So when we think about that, we don't, in Jabez's day, you know, they really did want 
uh, God's other blessings as well, but they actually had land and territory that they wanted to expand. So when we pray that now, it's Lord, expand my territory, my sphere of influence, the opportunities, the responsibilities that you have for me it, so that God can use us to expand the kingdom. Because he's the one that does it, but he uses us as instruments. And we are, we are so blessed that he uses us as instruments and vessels to do that, in, you know, enlarging the territory. So what I see happened in, during the pandemic was as the churches, they had to look at different ways to keep touch points with their people. You know, the church body was now all clustering in their homes and not getting out and not being able to worship together. And that's such a powerful thing when we can all get together. You know, if you like to lift your hands or not, you know, lift your hands in praise and worship. And as the churches began figuring it out, now some churches were already doing this and they were sort of ahead of the game because the church I was going to had never done any kind of virtual meetings of any kind. Um, it was just a smaller congregation and they just never had. So I saw our church say, oh, well, we've never done this before, but we can learn, right? We can always learn to do new things. And I know a lot of you during the whole last four years, so now we're in the fourth year, 2020 was the beginning of the pandemic, and here we are, 2024, things are shifting. Things are not going back the way they were, but things have, are reaching new levels. So people uh, that are used to attending church, are coming back. Those who maybe never have been in a church or didn't go much, found the church, found Jesus. A lot of people were saved during that time because of churches growing and expanding their territory to reach more people for Christ through Zoom, through Zoom and other uh, networking or uh, virtual platforms that you can use to do that. Just like we've been meeting all through that time, we uh, we got started a little earlier than most. Uh, Kathy Weaver and I were talking about this just this week. She and I got to get together. It was really fun and celebrate our birthdays late. But as we were talking, we realized that we were having some training classes and things. We were doing them live here in town. I was in Kansas City at the time then, and we were doing training things on um, on Zoom, and so. I would guess at least, I don't know, it doesn't sound like much now because we've been doing it so much, but just our fun, fearless group and our uh, connections, we're doing video conferencing and video things probably three, four, five times a month. And then after when the pandemic hit, we both went and did more of that because we knew we still needed to touch people. So when you're looking, when you're thinking of this, Lord, enlarge my territory, Ask yourself, what does that mean to you? What is it? There's a potential of, of uh, growing your business. And I think it really, it sort of comes from the part of why are you doing it? Because I'm going to tell you, if it's all about only, if it's only about, Lord, enlarge my territory so I can make a million dollars. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to pray for financial help. That is not what I'm saying. But what is your purpose so that you can have more than your neighbor, so that you can have as much as your sister or brother because they're so successful? Or is it because in your heart you want to help more people? Because here's the truth. I think Christians shy away from money, as a matter of fact. But the truth is when God blesses you financially, you're in a position to help more people. So when you're praying for God to bless you indeed, to enlarge your territory, and if part of that is expand your business, we are able to help more people when we have the the financial means or other means to do that. You know, you can't give from an empty cup. It's just like whether you're talking about uh, finances or other gifts, the abundance that we look for with joy and peace. If you are not at peace, how can you talk to someone and help someone else become at peace? You see what I'm saying? So, the you can't give what you do not have has to do with more than just finances. So as you ask God to increase your territory, give you more opportunities to share and to love others in the kingdom, whatever God has called you for. And I know you say, well, wait, 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 wait. 
I don't know if I want more responsibility. I'm already too busy. I don't think I can handle any more if God gave it to me. Well, trust me, if you are praying that prayer, God will answer that prayer again because you were asking for his will. And as he answers it, he will also give you the wisdom to make it work. He will get, he will make your time. It's almost like sometimes if you have more hours in the day, although we know we don't, we all have our 24 hours, but the way God helps you maneuver through that and manage the time and manage the resources that he gives us as he enlarges our territory, he enlarges also our abilities. We cannot do it by ourselves. So if you think when we talk about enlarge my territory, giving us opportunities and more responsibility, more responsibilities. If you're thinking that you're going to do that on your own, that's where you're missing the point. <laughs> the point is because in the next phrase on the prayer of Jabez, he says, let your hand be on me. The mighty hand of God, um, the hand of, so I'm going to read this little quote here from the hand of God is God's power and presence in the lives of his people. So when you pray for the hand of God to be on you, that's asking for his presence and his power. So you don't have to worry. We like to, we like to put ourselves in positions and think we're really going to handle all this or that we're going to control it. And it's like, no, we can't control anything. We, we can pray that God will overtake us, right? That his Holy Spirit will just overflow and show us, show us and work through us on how to handle those different responsibilities. The, um, uh, when we do that, we're asking it to, so that we can have a greater mark um, uh, for God in the kingdom of God. The, I wanna, I'm going to read you, the, in his book, he says this, he says, here's what we normally think of when we're, when we're praying for stuff. He says, you know, basically our humanists praise that my abilities and my experiences and my training plus my personality and, and appearance, plus my past and my experiences equals my assigned territory. And that is so wrong. That is not. It's really about my willingness and weakness plus God's will and his supernatural power that will expand our territory. He already knows. Y'all, this is so cool. I mean, this is one of those lessons from Joshua that you know I talk about periodically. In the book of Joshua, he always talks about how God has gone before us. Be bold and courageous for the Lord has gone before you. And when they entered the promised land, you know, they've been wandering, the Israelites have been wandering in the desert for 40 years. So when it came time to enter the promised land, you know, God just didn't say, okay, here it is. It's all ready for you. We still had to do, they still had to do something just like we still do. When we're praying to expand our territory, it doesn't mean that you don't have to do anything. We have to be obedient. We have to take the steps. And just like the priests had to put their foot in the water for the Jordan River to back off so they could walk through on dry land, when they crossed over every town, they had to pray and ask God's guidance and, and that God would direct them. The hand of God would be on them as they went into each of the different territories, each of the different towns God had prepared for them. He had already prepared the people. But if we don't do that, if, if they had tried to go in on their own power, they were outnumbered, there, no way. I mean, they would have just been killed and were all enslaved. But because they went in and prayed each time and then did it the way God said, don't you know that when they had to march around the city of Jericho for seven times, that some of those people were saying, oh my gosh, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. You know, there had to be doubters, y'all. There had to be doubters. Just like sometimes, like, Lord, really? Lord, I can't do this. I don't have the gifts for this. I don't have, I don't have the knowledge for it. I don't have, I just don't have what it takes. That's when God makes miracles. That's when he says, no, I know you don't. But I'm here. My hand is on you. And he begins to make the things move. He's the one, if we'll just listen, we'll just listen and allow him to work through us. You know, he's under us, around us. He surrounds us and he's lives, his spirit comes through us to accomplish those things. So it becomes exciting. It's like, okay, Lord, I am ready to see miracles. Are you asking 
or saying that to yourself, like, Lord, I'm ready for your miracles. I'm ready to step into whatever you want me to, you know, whatever territory you want me to expand. So it could be one-on-one. You don't have to be do everything in big ways. We just have to do it because God calls us each differently. So he may call you to, I, I really have no idea. Uh, you know, I use the example uh, quite often about, you know, someone comes to your heart and you call them and say, you know, can I come by and have a cup of coffee? Those are answering those nudges, those places where God wants to put you because those, everything that we do like that expands his territory. Now, I'm going to be really honest, y'all. When I, I hear people tell stories, I and mean, then he does this too in his book, um, you know, when they're flying and you know, just praying, okay, Lord, um, who needs me today? You know, who can, who can I who can I help? Who can I talk to? And they open themselves for those little God appointments. I'm going to be real. I just don't like to talk to people. <laughs> I don't like Delinda, you're the talker of the world here. Why would you want to talk to people? But somehow I go into a different thing and I'm not saying I'm not going to change that. I don't have, I don't have any plans to fly right away. Uh, no, that's not true. I'm going to Vegas in a couple of weeks. In any case, I tend to just go in and I want to read my book and I, I use it as like this quiet time. I'm in the plane. I don't know anybody. I don't have to have any conversation. So I don't look at that or in the, in the past, I have not looked at that. It's a God appointment that God may put this person right beside me that needs, you know, a little encouragement. It doesn't mean I'm going to open up the Bible and start quoting scripture to it. Now, if it comes to that, then hallelujah, what a blessing that would be. I've never had that happen. But then again, I'm not really looking for opportunities. So shame on me on that part, but um, it's making me become more aware of this. So when we pray for God to expand our territory, asking, the next thing is asking for his, for his hand to be on us. So Lord, expand my territory. But Lord, keep your hand on me. I can't do this by myself. I want your power. I want to do your will. I want your blessing, your blessings indeed. I want you to expand my territory so I can make a bigger difference for you. And Lord, I'm going to need your hand on me because I cannot do it by myself. So as we look at these things in the prayer of Jabez, um, I think it, it's really exciting to think of what could God do through us? What about even uh, if each of you began to earnestly seek that if we all did it together, we could make a huge difference for the kingdom. See how exciting that would be, and we can continue to encourage each other. And I think about the time somebody would say to you, "You just can't do that. That is too big for you. That doesn't make sense." That's when you say, "Oh, I know. I know that's absolutely true." But I have the hand of God on me, and this is where God's leading me. Because who can argue with that? Nobody can argue with. You know, you have the hand of God on you. There's nothing that's impossible. So let's pray for that, shall we? Uh, thank you, Facebook user out there. And Kathy, yes, thank you for saying uh, you're looking forward to hearing from the other guests. So my friends, thank you for being here today. We are just about at the top of the hour. So I've, I've hit on those those three top topics um, that he that he has in there. And you know, I'm not sure. We'll see where we go next week. But I just felt so led to uh, emphasize this one more time to really come in and help us. Because like I said, when I first went through this book about 20 years ago, I didn't really understand the next part uh, about, you know, keep me from evil. And, you know, this time reading it through and I will I will be posting something on that in the Facebook group about how we need to really look at that is that when he prays to that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. That's really crucial because God knows us. We each have our temptations. We each have where it's easy for us to slip, where it's easy for us to tune God out, whatever that looks like for you. And his prayer there is keep me from evil, keep me from sinning, keep me from disobedience. Keep me from the things that I know pull me away from you. I do believe that as we pray for his blessings and for increasing our territory and asking and praying that his hand of power and presence be on us, when we stay really true to that and very intentional, 
it's less likely that we're going to be straying off. But sometimes that is what happens. We get a little comfortable like, oh, this is going so great. Sometimes it might be easy to say, oh, man, look what we're doing here. And it's beginning to slip down on giving the glory to God. When we know everything's coming from him. But we all have that. We're human and God, God knows that about us. And when we pray that he will keep us from evil, that he will keep us from taking those steps that will turn us away from him, he will do it. And of course, the last, the very last sentence of the prayer. So God granted him what he requested. God answered his prayers and he will answer ours. He will answer yours. He loves us just unconditionally. And that in itself is just so powerful. So thank you again for being here. I hope you will go to my um, Zoom, my Zoom, whatever, my Zoom room. <laughs> hope you will go check in on Zoom, go back to the Facebook group. I do not have that handy right here that I can just post it for you. So I apologize. Let me see. Maybe this is in here somewhere. Let me take a quick look. Uh, nope. Looks like I do not have that on there. But just go to the Facebook group. You will see that um, on the announcement, it has the Zoom link for you there. And this is a networking. Everybody gets to speak. Everybody gets to talk about, uh, you shared their one minute of what you do in business. And y'all, this is a ex perfect example of how to expand your territory. When you do networking, and I'm not saying go crazy, do 100 of them a week. But I'm just saying when you're networking, you're getting out of your own way. You're meeting new people. You're making a difference. And I can't tell you. I mean, I can't even count how many times I've gotten to share my faith doing a one-on-one -on -one after a networking event. It's just incredible. And I would think, Lord, I had no idea when I was jumping into networking that I would have that opportunity. He will provide opportunities around you all the time. If you will stay open, little miracles, these, these things that you think are ordinary in your life, God will use them for his glory and for his kingdom. All right, my friends, thanks for being here. I look forward to seeing you next week. Remember that life is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. So I'd say this week, let's just say, let's choose to pray that prayer every day and every day for the next two, two or three weeks. We said 30 days. So it was 30 days from last Tuesday, whatever that is. All right, everybody take care. God bless you indeed. Bye now.